the fact is that with scientific knowledge production, most people don't know how to participate. Yeah, exactly. I think science should civilize people. Has it civilized people? Not clear to me at all. How does what I say count in any way? How does my contribution have any value? Something you thought was so deeply ingrained in your being, chuck it out like yesterday's newspaper. Seems to me to some extent, to the extent that I, I, I've, I look at and to the extent I understand some of what you've done, and probably I don't, but um, that, that you, you, some of it seems to be designed in a sense to shock, to shock you and therefore force you to reassess what you thought was kind of the norm. What is it that would force scientists who would otherwise be complacent and generally sort of accept the, the social context of what they're doing to, to reassess that? And, and then I started to look at what you did and I thought maybe that that's what you, that, anyway, that's what I meant by impact is to, is to, so do you purposefully ever think about what, about shock? It's not exactly shock I'm after. Um, I think there's some very tried and true ways to get at shock. Mm -hmm. But it is sort of um, to startle or to surprise, to, um, um, to, you know, there's some instant of peculiarity that then allows you to get, to get the attention first, then to give the consideration. Exactly, to, sh to shock them. I mean, we, we were talking earlier, but I'll repeat it, that, uh, that I uh, have been involved in teaching and other things for a while, and, I, and, and, and in, in terms of my writing as well, I think the I often tell teachers that the biggest mistake they make, but I think it's true for anyone, teachers, car salesmen, artists probably, it, the biggest mistake you make is to assume people are interested in what you have to say. And so you, mm -hmm. and you have to think of a way, therefore, as I put it, to seduce them into thinking, to, into thinking about what you have to say. And one of the ways, I mean, there are a lot of different ways to do it. One of the ways is to pick a subject that, they're, you know, that they might be interested in, like in the case of Star Trek, as I did in one case. But, but the other way, it seems to me, is to, is to, is to force them out of complacency by by startling them, and that causes them to sort of suddenly think. And I, don't, I, I got the sense that that was kind of what you were trying to do. It is, I mean, it, it is a, a strategy, but it's, a, you know, it surprises me, right? The half-life ratio, which I was just recalculating, which compares the market value of sperm and the market value of ova, um, an economic indicator that sure. tracks these. And when you actually calculate in the, you know, the long-term, health risks that, you know, the labor uh -huh. put in, the um, unknown short-term known health risks, uh -huh. the risks of future litigation, the, the fact that ova is a perishable mm -hmm. good and sperm and embryos can be, you know, cryogenically stored, uh -huh. um, and a number of other kind of uh, See, I didn't parameters. that ova can't be cryogenically stored. I guess right, I didn't realize that. Economically, would drive that the value of that good up. Yeah, sure. But yeah, once you look at the contracts of one type of donor, comes out, you know, and the, the contracts are all in the language of donation and philanthropy. Uh -huh. And the other type of contract for uh, is in the language of transaction. And really. And um, and unsurprisingly, or you would be, you could probably guess which gender yeah. the um, reproductive tissue they come out about forty thousand dollars per down versus six cents up per viable reproductive cell. Really? Right. So and that's genuinely shocking to me. Yeah, no, that is no, that is that's exactly that right. That's can be, that we can reproduce such such uh, tried and true gender differences before. <laughs> yeah. before and with this brand new assistive reproductive technology yeah. we have um, so in some sense it's Jeez, it's I ways figured of sperm are a dime a dozen or perhaps a dime a billion <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and no one ever asks sperm donors what their motivation is I mean uh, over donors have to go through a full battery of psychological tests to figure you know and really? they have to mm, it's it's very interesting it, so, it yeah. is interesting a friend of mine who who's a physicist who shall already nameless now, I, but a well-known physicist, so, um, was asked to contribute to one of these genius sperm banks, and I always thought that was, I mean, it shocked me that he did it. Mm. But, um, and would, yeah, <laughs> it would shock me. Um, I, and I'm, you know, I'm interested in both over donors and sperm donors, why they would want to do it, not just... Yeah, no, no, I mean, I'd do it if they wanted, you know, a, you know, a perfect male specimen, then I could. <laughs> 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 All right. So anyway, but... Uh, uh, no, but it is interesting that I didn't realize that they don't ask the, well, they ask the, probably just the background, but not your motivation.
for a right. sperm donor. But again, so, so are you doing a piece around that? or, or do Yeah, so this is a, a, an economic indicator that I update every now and then. And the numbers have just changed because of the uh, legislation with um, stem cells. Yeah, and, sure. And so now all the young female graduate students are being recruited to donate over. And of course they can't pay because it would somehow yeah. be morally that's wrong to that's pay ridiculous. women. It's fine to pay <laughs> sperm donors, and, you know. And the, no, that and yeah, the, 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 I, I, we, we may get into that, but 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 that gets me back to what. Uh, so, I if I understand, question? well, no, no. I mean, to some extent, you know, I do the kind of science which is probably the least practical. You can possibly do. I probably was driven there for that reason. Um, it, you know, that has no implications for anything. But, uh, <laughs> except knowledge at some level, and we could talk about that. But so I want, it's, sa you, it's easy to feel safer. Right? You discover something about the universe that's not going to have clear negative impacts or clear negative social impacts. But um, but science is a social enterprise, and that's just, and of course I guess that's a lot of what you've been been working on. Uh, what interests you the most about the social impact of science, or the social context of science? It's a hard question, I know. It allows me to have coffee right now. <laughs> well, I was, um, I'm going to deflect it back to you because okay. when I came to the States and started working at, um, at Xerox Park mm -hmm. in computer science, there was a language that I didn't speak, even though I could speak in Fortran and mm -hmm. Pascal and C++. I couldn't speak Star Trek. I didn't <laughs> know what these people were talking about yes. when it came to, you know, a lingua franca in the entire lab between computer science and um, the languages lab and the um, CSCW lab and you know these various different labs. The point of reference that everyone shared was, you know, oh, like they do in, in Star <laughs> Trek. <laughs> <laughs> And I literally, you know, crammed when I got there, borrowed all the things to to um, to try and catch up, so I could know what the hell they were talking about. A transporter bus. <laughs> you didn't see that in in, Aus in Australia. You didn't see well, there was, you know, there were. I suppose there were trekkies there, but I wasn't. Oh, it's a, a big trekkie trekky place. I've I've discovered that. Oh, it is. It's okay. really a huge trek, which you kind of doesn't. It stands to reason when you think about it. It seems to me in retrospect, but yeah, they're big trekkers now, and it's trekker, not trekkie. I had to learn that too. But you know, I, but okay. no, but I had a similar experience in some sense. Uh -huh. I mean, so you hit the motivation for writing that book is that is that uh, a lot of people didn't find didn't and don't find physics interesting, but they found Star Trek fascinating. So the motivation, if I if I happen to think the real universe is much more interesting than the Star Trek universe, right. but so but if you want to do that, it's, uh, the way to do it, it seems to me, is to reach people through the Star Trek universe and sort of again, seduce them to thinking about the real universe. And therefore, I had to cram, too. I had no, I, I, I uh, as I told you, I was terrified of alienating 20 million Star Trek fans in, in this country, maybe more. I also found that my, the interesting thing about it, and, I, and it'd be interesting to see if you had that experience, I also assumed that it was mostly sort of 14-year-old boys. Right. But what I discovered was it was intergenerational, it was gender non-specific, that there was this, at least in my experience, that there were not only doctors but lawyers and I mean people from all persuasions that were really in interested in that and 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 then I started to think about why and and again that's kind of interesting to me because what one of the things I think that Star Trek does do and one of the reasons I think it was so popular is that too often science fiction or very often science fiction presents a dystopic view of the future sort of a you know how science is bad and gonna make the Star Trek is really based on this notion, which may or may not be true, that science can not only make the world a better place, but it can actually make civilization a better thing and make people more civil and more understanding and all the rest. And what a weird view that, that, uh, of the future, that science can actually make that. And, and, uh, and I don't know if that's the most unrealistic thing about Star Trek in some sense, that somehow it, it, it really felt that science can civilize. I think science should civilize people. Has it civilized people? Not clear to me at all. 